I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2, Legendary- We didn't really do anything, we just did a bunch of side quests. In fact, all 100% are done, but hello my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Missile Online, and our continuing playthrough of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres, and even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on Patreon.com slash Missile Online, where you can actually, right now, uh, if you're watching this when it's live, if you're watching in the future, hello future, uh, you can actually vote and see what hair color you want me to have next. Uh, right now, it looks like Burgundy or Silver is currently leading, uh, which is very cool. So you can go ahead, patreon.com, link is in the description below. You can check that out. Also, uh, we have a new thing here on YouTube called Thanks, where you can actually highlight your comment on any of my videos throughout this the, the thousands that I've made, uh, and you can actually uh, just tip and it goes directly to me and it highlights your your comment has a little thing next to it to show that you did that um which is pretty cool so you'll see a thing below the bar and it says thanks we just got that it's just enabled it's just a cool little thing that youtube has done to uh to uh, give thanks i guess to creators uh anyways in this episode finally my friends after a very long time we are going to be proceeding with loyalty missions and in fact today's as you guessed from the title of the video we are going to be doing Jacob's the gift of greatness loyalty mission uh, which is actually well, a lot of people think it's one of the worst but we're gonna go ahead and ask um, Kelly real quick there we go so the first thing that we're going to do then since we know that we have to go talk to Jacob is we're gonna go inside and we're actually gonna go say hello Jacob and see what he has in store for us today Commander, sorry I'm a little unfocused. Personal matter. It won't affect my duties. Uh, yeah, okay. The yeoman said you wanted to see me. What's this about, Jacob? As I said, it's a personal matter. I don't want to waste our time if it turns out to be a goose chase. But... Well, I got pinged by a ghost the other night. Family. Uh, a ghost, huh? I'm listening. My private log got an update about the Hugo Gerns back ship my father served on. It sent an SOS last week, reporting a crash and requesting a rescue. Shepard, that ship went missing ten years ago. I hadn't talked to my father for three years before that. I buried everything but a body. Now, I'm not convinced it isn't just some automated distress signal ticking over. It's been too long. I think you'd be more excited that your father might be alive. He wasn't around enough for me to have bad memories. It's an old, well-heeled wound. But if he's actually alive and needs help, I also want to note that it's not normal procedure for distress calls to be routed to the Normandy. This was passed to my personal log through Cerberus filters. Hmm. So somebody within Cerberus would have sent this. Any signs that this is a Cerberus front? Who passed this to you? I doubt the elusive man would let a direct operation stake hold this long. If there's a link, it's probably just about money. Cerberus needs diverse holdings to fund projects like, well, you. And whoever sent this my way covered their tracks. Someone could be fishing for favors, or thought it would get under my skin. Who knows with that bunch. And what about the ship and the mission? Tell me about the Hugo Gernsback and what it was doing. Privately held frigate. I looked over the mission brief when it disappeared. Nothing stood out. Typical research and grab operation. Find an uncharted planet, stake a claim, and establish as large a presence as you can as fast as possible to shut out competitors. You didn't get along with your father? He made no apologies, I'll give him that. You make a mistake, you own up to it. Even if you keep making it. Whatever problems we had were a lifetime ago. I've had ten years to get to where I am. And as far as I know, he's still a ghost. Great. Well, I guess that puts it into perspective what our loyalty mission is going to be. We need to check to see, is Jacob's father still alive? I think we can spare the time. Pass the coordinates to Joker. I appreciate that, Commander. I don't expect more than dusty old bones, but it'll be good to close the record. I think the real story here is that there is... Uh, a somebody within Cerberus that knew about this and transferred it to Jacob specifically. So somebody either is looking out for Jacob or somebody is trying to hurt Jacob. 
Jack would like to talk with you. I don't know which one. So we're not going to worry about talking to anybody else that has loyalty missions for us just yet. Instead, we are going to use the mass relay, leave the system that we are currently exploring, which was Elium, because I thought maybe I could buy stuff. And you'll notice that we have a brand new system that we can now head to the Rosetta Nebula. So let's go ahead, head there. You thought we were 100% completed with nebulas and, and system. Not yet, baby. So we'll arrive in Enoch and we'll actually notice that we have another system called Phi Cleo that we can check out, as well as all the planets here in Enoch. So let's go ahead and just explore what we can. And the first one that we'll look at is Job here. And on Job, immediately we get an anomaly that we can now detect. Something that I absolutely love about this planet, by the way, is this is another planet that shows signs of a Reaper invasion of some kind. Thousands of years ago, Job was home to a primate primate-like spacefaring civilization, as well as abundant flora and fauna. However, this can only be deduced from time capsules that were put into the ground well outside of habitation centers. All cities and detectable dwellings were targeted in a massive orbitable, orbitable, orbital, orbitable <laughs> bombardment that turned them into vapor. The resulting dust shroud killed all photosynthetic life and all fauna dependent on it. Humans have recolonized this planet and are rapidly introducing their own species. So that's pretty cool. Atmospheric pressure at sea level on Job is double that of Earth. Visitors with upper respiratory infections should uh, see, a, see a, a physician before they go here. I just think it's cool. It, there's a ton of planets that we can actually find, and a, a lot of them actually give hints of the Reaper invasion. So let's go ahead and find this anomaly very quickly, and we will find that there's a mercenary activity has been detected on the planet's surface. Communications match blue suns, so it looks like potentially we're going to be dealing with more blue suns. Even more importantly, this planet does have element zero, so I do recommend picking that up here in Job. It's worth mentioning you will only have access to this system uh, when you are probably doing the loyalty mission. It's probably going to be the first time that you have access to the Rosetta Nebula. But before we go ahead and do that mission, let's go ahead and scan the rest of the planets that we can do here, including Laban, which is another uh, mineral-rich planet that also has element zero on it. And, believe it or not, there is also the gas giant of Mizram that somehow also has element zero on it, which is a very rare occurrence for a gas giant to have anything worth getting. And finally, the last planet that we can find in Enoch is going to be Goliath, another gas giant. And because this uh, this assignment that we just got to investigate Job in the dig site actually launches a longer campaign of things that we can do, we're going to wait just a little bit before we tackle that side quest uh, because it does lead to a, a few different ones. Actually, I need to get some gas. So we're gonna head to Phi Cleo and see what we can find here. And luckily for us, this is a small system, only two planets that we can explore and Parnassus being one of them. This is a mineral-rich planet with iridium, platinum, and palladium. Interestingly enough, Parnassus must have been deleted from the database, which feels like a reference to Star Wars, I'm just saying. The only other planet that we can scan here is Silene, which is a poor mineral planet, which is just not worth scanning at all. But we need it for credit, so there we go. The Phi Cleo system is 100%. I have a feeling we'll be back here. So we're going to head finally to the Alpha Draconis where we can help Jacob and his loyalty mission, which is the purpose of today's entire episode. So I need to not stress too much about, you know, that assignment. Anyways, we can check out 2175AR2, another poor sister, another poor planet uh, with no real minerals to be had. And the only other planet that we can get is 2175AA, where we can... Anomaly is there, and also we can uh, help Jacob out here. This is where the ship that his dad was on apparently landed. Maybe this is where distress beacon's coming from. It's named after an Asari, sci uh, an Asari scientist. This rem most res remote planet appears to have been on the list of forbidden mass relays that led to uncharted space. Little data available comes from one far off probe flyby that reports two planets orbiting a white dwarf star. Our own scans yield far more interesting results. The planet is within the habitable zone of the star. It has oceans of liquid water and a thin nitrogen oxygen atmosphere consistent with carbon based plant life. It's possible this is an on, uh, as yet on explored garden world. That's very interesting. So let's scan it. It's a rich planet. So we can go ahead and we can find this anomaly real quick. And right on the spot where the anomaly is, we are able to get a ton of element zero. Doing a quick scan of the planet since it's rich, grab as much element zero as we can get from it. And unfortunately, there's not that much element zero, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna land on this planet 
And, uh, well, I think we're going to have to select a team first. And because, of course, it is his loyalty mission, we have to take Jacob. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, however, any abilities that are going to be big AoE things are going to be very useful for this because we're going to be dealing with a lot of very weak enemies, but a lot of them. So because we're taking Jacob, I also, I got to bring Kasumi. And the reason for that is because, as we know, by talking to Kasumi, she has a huge crush on Jacob. So it just kind of makes sense that she would want to come along for his loyalty mission and watch, watch what he's up to and see how his uh you know how he deals with what's about to happen so that's who we're going to bring is Kasumi. nobody else really has any unique dialogue here miranda would make sense to bring as well if that's somebody that you are thinking about for uh for loyalty um and story reasons miranda obviously being uh, jacob's i don't want to say friend uh but but work work uh friend if you will you know maybe I don't know. Anyways, we have four points that we can put into Kasumi here. So we're going to go ahead and we are actually going to uh, increase. Uh, we're going to go with her Master Thief ability just to max that out and make that as strong as possible. She's most powerful when she's able to use her abilities. So obviously we're going to go with Master Infiltrator instead of Saboteur because I just don't think that her powers lie in her weapons. They lie in her area overload and shadow strike. And then for our boy... Uh, Jacob, we have Cerberus Specialist. Now, when he is done with his loyalty mission, he is going to unlock a barrier, which is pretty useful. I just don't think that on Insanity, like I said with Grunt as well, I just don't really think that increasing defense is that strong. It just doesn't do enough. They're going to die regardless. So we're going to put another point into Incendiary Ammo. We already have Pole Field, which is good, and Cerberus Specialist. So let's go ahead. Let's get this started. We're going to keep the Arc Projector as well here because I think that's going to be useful. You could go with... I would also recommend um, the Singularity Projector is very good, and the Grenade Launcher and the Avalanche are all very, very useful to stagger some enemies. So let's go ahead and let's land on Aya. 2217 Aya? You know what I'm saying. beautiful planet it really is and it looks like this wasn't a trap there really is a ship here and this might be the ship that jacob's father was on 10 years ago that was lost why it would send out a distress beacon now there that's is, very curious mostly intact it could have survived impact but it's been years well this planet looks pretty inhabitable so potentially jacob's father might actually still be alive so we'll see that there is some wreckage but for the most part the ship looks good and we'll notice like that there's a VI. The crash. They'd have tried to get a beacon up as soon as possible. Right here, we can go ahead and salvage some parts. Get that for 1,500 credits, which is absolutely worth doing. And then we'll find a partial officer's log. Let's go ahead and access that and see what's going on here. Along with us anymore. We've done horrible things to the crew. The conditions they're in, they don't understand what we're doing to them. Distract them for two seconds and they forget what, what, what you did before the bruises show. It's got to stop. I'm talking to the others as soon as it is over. Huh. So they're doing something to the crew that's causing... Repeat. Toxology alert. Danger of rapid neural decay. Local Interesting. Why don't we go ahead... Ah. Let's go ahead inside the ship and see if we can find anything that might be useful. First of all, we're going to hack the PDA that we just saw that's over here. We're going to hack this first, get 3,000 credits, which I am certainly not mad about. And then it looks like we have another log here that we can access. Hear a little bit more about what's going on. Interesting. So Captain Fairchild must have died and they replaced him with somebody else who was next up in command is what it sounds like. We have doctor's logs over here that we can go ahead and check out as well. See if we can fill in a little bit more. What was her name? Sarah? S Suzanne? My God, I can't remember. I can't remember her face. We need to get out. So I 
can remember, can, can think straight. They have to hurry. So that was the doctor who can't remember anything. We also heard the VI talking about how toxicology here is not great. We have another crew log here. friends this loyalty mission can be a little um a little dark as we start to unravel the mystery of what's happening here on this uncharted planet one that by all accounts looks safe let's go ahead and talk to this beacon here this beacon's been here a while why would they wait years to signal pause in beacon protocol eight years 237 days seven hours pause is recorded as record deleted by acting captain Ronald Taylor. That's not right. My father was first officer. Ronald Taylor was promoted under emergency command protocols. Other flagged issues on safe deceleration. Local food in neural decay. Beacon activation protocols. Well, first of all, we need to find out right away about the local food in neural decay. Local food impairs brain functions? What are the effects? Impairment of mental function due to chemical imbalance begins within seven days of ingesting local flora, regardless of decontamination or preparation. Impact on higher cognitive abilities and long-term memory is cumulative, but significant within a standard month. It is not known if neural decay is permanent. Data collection was not completed. And what about this beacon? Why wasn't the beacon activated before now? This emergency beacon became functional after 358 days, 12 hours, following the unscheduled suborbital descent of the Hugo Gernsback. Activation was triggered remotely after eight years, 237 days, seven hours, on the authority of Acting Captain Ronald Taylor. Pause in beacon protocol is recorded as record deleted. So they activated the this doesn't make any sense. Anyways, what caused the ship to crash? I assume unsafe deceleration refers to the crash. Give me the details. Following an unspecified impact and sublight drive failure, the Hugo Gernsback made an unscheduled descent at 465% of theoretical recommended suborbital velocity. The Hugo Gernsback then decelerated at 782% of theoretical recommended approach velocity, sustaining significant damage to investment and crew. Why are you comparing the crash to theoretical speeds? The Hugo Gernsback was constructed off-world. It is not rated for suborbital descent, and doing so exceeded operational parameters. So it wasn't ever supposed to land. Who is in command of this ship? Where are the survivors? Captain Harris Fairchild reported killed following unscheduled suborbital descent. First Officer Ronald Taylor promoted infield to acting captain. But where is he now? The location of the remaining crew of the Hugo Gernsback is unknown. This beacon has been unattended for several maintenance cycles. Hmm. Very strange. So they set this up about a, a, a year after the crash, but then it wasn't activated until a few weeks ago, after a hiatus of almost nine years. Let's go ahead and Come see on, what's going on. Going. My father had a working beacon, but didn't signal for almost nine years. Maybe that neural decay affected him. There's no way he could avoid eating something grown on this planet. Now eventually they would have to, whether it's a plant or a creature. So continuing on, we'll find that there's some cover ahead. Which probably means we are in for some trouble. You came from the sky? The leader said someone would come. He delayed for so long, but he still has power. Some have lost faith. The hunters, they will have seen your star. They will not let you help him. Um, calm down. What are you talking about? You're not making sense. Uh, I, I don't remember how to say it. He's... Our leader and we serve so we can go home. But some want to fight him. They were they were cast out. He exiled them. So they hunt his machines and those who help him. They don't believe that rescue will watch out. And with that paragon interrupts. They won't stop until the leader is dead. Kill them. Agents of the liar. He will not escape. <laughs> 
Well, we're going to go ahead and immediately put our people into cover so that they don't die. It is very difficult to actually remain alive here because of the way that this mission works. These guys are going to, they're going to fire the SMGs at us, which are actually incredibly strong at taking us out. So we're going to go ahead and charge, keep ourselves alive. There's actually two over here that we're going to take out as quickly as we can charge this one as well knocking him away and hopefully being able to take this one out too now this mission here can actually be incredibly difficult because of the amount of people that actually arrive here and without the defensive abilities uh, offensive and defensive abilities of a vanguard you might end up having some trouble when dealing with all of those hunters in fact one of the things that happens a lot because they are using the M9 Tempest SMGs, they fire it with per perfect accuracy, you will just get a ton, a ton of bullets coming at you and you can't do much. Now, something that's worth mentioning, and this is kind of funny to me, uh, this is actually an inaccuracy with the way that the game works in the world of the game. They have thermal clips. Now, when this, there's uh, apparently somebody left over here, a feral hunter is still left. Um, when this ship crashed, the years that it would have thermal clips didn't exist yet so the fact that they're using thermal clips is just really funny to me so let's go ahead and let's finish this guy off real quick there we go take down a feral hunter and then we can talk to this survivor they just seemed regular old crazy to me my father wouldn't let this go on something is very wrong Something is very wrong indeed. Actually, that fight went very smooth, but on, on hardest difficulties, like Insanity, that fight can be uh, one of the hardest in the game to survive. It's also worth mentioning that if you bring Tally with you, her energy drain can be super useful there. Unfortunately, it just didn't really seem like we needed anybody else to survive that because of the power of a Vanguard. And it's also worth mentioning that um, using heavy weapons there isn't the worst idea. So let's go ahead and talk to this survivor and see if we can learn a little bit more about what's happening here. You killed them, but there are more every day. They want to fight, but I just want to go home. She's lost it. We need to find someone who can make sense of this. All right, well, let's continue on then. See if we can find anything else. Now, if we, we want to keep a lookout because hopefully there are items that we can get here after those hunters have attacked us. In fact, there are. Right here, we can salvage 1,500 credits, meaning already we have 6,000 credits that we found here. So let's continue on. Make sure that we have our weapons ready to go. Get that incendiary ammo. And also make sure that our our boy, Jacob, also has incendiary ammo on, which I think he does. Right here, we can find a stripped mech. Stripped for parts. Tech's wearing out. Those hunters must be laying on the pressure. Huh. Interesting. Up ahead, it looks like a settlement of some kind awaits us. Is that a settlement? They'd better be friendlier than the beach group. I need answers. And they do appear relatively friendly. In fact, they're not shooting us. So that could mean that we're in a good spot to say hello. They're wearing the same uniform as the ones who attacked us, but they don't look ready for a fight. There aren't any men here. Maybe it affects genders differently. It makes males get violent. That would make sense. But the woman on the beach said the exiled ones came back as hunters. It doesn't matter right now. One of these people must know what my father has to do with this. You have his face. He promised to call the sky, but he sends nothing. He forced us to eat, to... Decay! You are cursed with his face! Uh-oh. Not the best reaction to the family resemblance, Jacob. Why would my father force his crew to eat toxic food? Whatever's happening here needs to stop. That is not good. Let's check these, food, these stores. food stores. They've been eating only that toxic local food for who knows how long. Like that wasn't obvious enough. Very strange. Only f the women are here. Go away. You are like him. You will keep us here. He has a cruel face. His cruel face. I can't talk to you. I don't want punishing. Interesting. But the other woman that we met seemed to be... Seemed to think of him as a hero. Anyways, we can examine this statue that's here. What the hell? Somebody had to push them to make that. That's borderline worship. Oh, no. 
The hunters will kill you. They fight because he exiled them and waited too long. He is bad. He has a bad face like the other. Like him. You'll hurt me. He keeps us. Protects us. And we please him like he demands. That's not great. That is oof. He keeps us. Protects us. Oh no. Him like he demands. Is it possible that Jacob's dad has a harem going on here? We grab another 1500 credits there. We'll also notice that right away we are going to have to face some Loki mechs that we can go ahead and start putting some damage in on. And we're also going to go ahead and shadow strike one of these. Taking one hopefully out. Then we're going to go ahead and reeve this one. And then we'll go ahead and charge as soon as we can. As soon as the cooldown's gone. And we can finish these off. These Loki mechs just kind of come out. They're going to do that no matter what. And more are going to arrive as well. Oh, no, I guess. Who the hell are we dealing with here? Well, that would make them hate Maybe it was just for defense. The Loki mechs being just for defense. Anyways, we can access this PDA as well for 2,100 credits. Already getting a lot of credits here in this settlement on, on this planet, which is good because that's exactly what we need. We need all of the credits. And I guess, I guess Jacob's loyalty is also fine. Please, here. You could end it. Now, this is the doctor. We heard about her logs before and she couldn't remember someone's name. You have his face. But you fight his machines. You might stop this. This, I forget how to read. But this was the start. What he promised and what they did to us. We need the sky. Take us back to the sky. What is this? Jacob, what does it say? It's a crew log book. Some of them thought the beacon repair was taking too long. They were afraid they'd run out of supplies and lose their minds to the decay. My father restricted the ship food for himself and the other officers so they wouldn't be affected. Everybody else had to eat the toxic food and hope for treatment later. The rest is a casualty list. A few mutinied over the decision. My father and his officers turned the mechs on them. Oh no. He wasn't command material and it got to him. Couldn't keep the crew in line without violence. It didn't stop there. More incidents, harsh punishments. It's like they're cattle or toys. In a year, all the male crew members are flagged as exiled or dead. They separated out the women, assigned them to officers like pets. And after the beacon is fixed, the officers appear in the casualties too. After. My father took control and didn't stop it. <laughs> this is, um, this is not good. Does it say why he separated the men and women? Or is it as bad as it seems? No, it turns to gibberish. Maybe the men got violent early on, but from the state of this place, I'd say the hunter thing is recent. What he allowed here, Shepard? I don't see any justification. Anything in there about whether the effects of the toxic food can be treated? Nothing. But it seems like the right call. If everyone gets it, who's left to fix the beacon? You'd never get out. But they did fix it. And the signal wasn't sent until now. I'm starting to see why. We haven't seen any other officers. He killed them? There were five after the crash. Medical, engineering, bridge staff. Should have had no problem fixing the beacon and keeping the people safe. All killed within the same week. About a month after the beacon was repaired. Do you see an explanation for this? He's your father. Is he? None of this fits. Maybe the initial decision, but the rest? Abuse of power doesn't get any clearer than this. I need to find this man. This is, um, probably not what he expected. Anyways, let's go ahead and set this to explode here. We did get some Paragon points from that interaction there. And probably back up. And now we can continue forward. This is Captain Ronald Taylor. Thank God you're here. My crew went insane. I only just got free. Uh. God damn it. It's really him. Just got free. He's covering his ass. That is not great. Let's go ahead and examine uh, these dead bodies. Looks like that dried up body was left as a warning. These newer ones were just dumped here. The hunters started fighting back. 
maybe, maybe things aren't quite as they seem here. Maybe it's not quite as bad for Jacob's father as, as it's seeming. Anyways, we're immediately going to find some more Loki mechs that we're going to need to deal with. So we're going to go ahead, heavy reeve some of them, and hopefully take them down quickly so that we don't die. And we're going to be dealing with a bunch of Loki mechs here. So we're going to want to try to take this. Ronald Taylor saying that he had no choice but to turn these on and that he can't turn them off now. That he turned them on for his safety from the hunters. And of course, Jacob does not agree with what his father is saying, which is interesting. He has no idea, but he's very quick to turn on his dad. So we're going to go ahead, hopefully kill these Loki mechs before they become a huge issue for us. We also are able to find a heavy pistol damage upgrade, which is great. And we can salvage 1,500 credits from this. More Loki mechs are going to keep approaching, so we're going to hopefully take them out and get this heavy reeve going. And maybe a pull field. Perfect. And then we will go ahead and area overload as well, just to get that stun on. And hopefully taking down as many as possible. Looks like even more mechs are coming out of here. So we're going to go ahead and charge to get our shields back as our health is dipping so low because of the power of uh, these. These Loki mechs are actually super, super dangerous. Hopefully we can take this one out. Other ones approaching from behind as well. So we're going to charge this one, send it uh, to its knees. Wait for this other one to approach as well. We're going to go ahead and heavy reeve. Heavy Reeve basically does double damage to armor and barriers, so we're able to destroy the army of armor of these mechs incredibly quickly. So we're going to go ahead and finish off this Loki mech as well, give it a good charge here, and this one we are going to... Uh, we're actually just going to Shadow Strike it, and she'll be able to finish that off. But we need to check out a little bit more and see if there's anything else that we can loot here. Jacob seems to be um, doing Jacob thing. I don't... Listen... Interesting. So if we come over here, that double check to make sure we're not missing out. anything. Son of a bitch. Jacob being so fast to make his dad seem like a horrible monster. He's not trying to justify it. He's not trying to, you know, maybe maybe his dad's telling the truth. Maybe he really was captured. It doesn't sound like he was, according to the, the women that we just met that said that he, Jacob has his face, his cruel face. Uh, that's very interesting. Very interesting that somehow... This could happen. And we're going to keep proceeding forward. Probably going to be dealing with more Loki mechs as we go. But look at how beautiful this area is. Reminds me if we could explore more of Vermeer in Mass Effect 1. It's just a, It actually really is a beautiful planet. And we're going to be dealing with more Loki mechs. So we're going to go ahead and try to take these out as quickly as we can. We're going to go and see if we can... Uh, let's actually go ahead and charge this one so we don't die. And then this one is going to be Shadow Strike. Unfortunately, it'll probably die before she hits it. Eh, well, that did no damage. I was expecting that to do a little bit more. Took years to train his guards, he says. We can grab this med station here for 100 credits. Throwing people away, he says. Salvage that for 1,500 credits. And power cells for another 100. We haven't used anything yet, so we're actually looking pretty good. More enemies are going to obviously approach as we come into this encampment here. This time, brainwashed guards. The people that he spent years training, apparently. So no longer are we dealing with mechs. We are now dealing with actual living human beings. Taking down that drone with that... Uh, that area overload that we have from Kasumi. Gonna go ahead and charge this guy here. Get him rocking and rolling. We have a Ymir mech in the back that is starting to fire on us as well. So we're going to hopefully take down the rest of the humans while we can. Go ahead and charge this one. And just watch out for the Ymir mech this entire time. Charge again so that we can hopefully take him out before he becomes a problem as well. And there we go. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy down. And that should be all of the humans. We're going to go ahead and grab... I know I just saw it. Where was it? Uh, refined element zero for 500. 
Once only the Ymir mech is left, we're going to put some damage in. And luckily for us, we are actually going to basically able to keep... Um, we're going to switch to the SMG here. We're going to pretty much be able to keep it coming between us and um, Kasumi. And then we can actually just kind of dip into cover here. Watch out for its gun. It's going to keep switching. We're going to go ahead and... Whoops, missed that. And then we'll go ahead and Shadow Strike as well. And we can kind of just keep dancing between this Ymir mech this entire time. It's going to shoot a rocket at us. We could just dodge it. It's no big deal. And keep this going. We're going to put the incendiary ammo onto the SMG to make sure that we have that. And we, like I said, we could just keep doing this all day. Watch out for the rockets. Dance around this thing. And it's no big deal. We're going to go ahead and overload this to stun it. And charge as well. Uh, which hopefully should be enough to take it down. And now that it's on its knees, we can go ahead and finish off the Ymir Meg. That can be a little bit sketchy of a fight. Jacob did go down during that. And of course, now that we've done that, we need to scour the area and make sure that we've gotten everything that we possibly can find here for items, uh, money, thermal clips, because who knows what's waiting for us next. It could be, it could be anything. Could be, could be a very angry dad. Who knows? Anyways, we can come over here. Now, another really good way of dealing with this entire section would actually be to head over as soon as you come in. You can head over here into this little area. And it's actually a lot harder for the Ymir mech to get over here. And it just kind of kind of helps if you're struggling with this. This can be a really hard spot just because of the way that it's set up. If you don't take out the humans quickly and you're dealing with the Ymir mech and the humans, you're probably going to be hurting just a little bit. Anyways, it looks like there is a PDA that we can go ahead and access here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not even sure where that... Oh, it was on the ground right here. 2,400 credits. I guess we should probably proceed forward. If you were super struggling on this part, if you actually head back to where this wall is over here, where the metagel was that we picked up, the uh, the Ymir mech actually won't follow you back here whatsoever. So you can actually hide behind this wall and just kind of kill the Ymir mech and do pot shots. It won't come past that wall whatsoever. So if you are really struggling, I would recommend using that strategy as well to try to cheese it a little bit. So let's go ahead and proceed forward. And I have a feeling we're about to run into Jacob's dad. And finally, Ronald Taylor himself. So this is where his base was. Looks pretty stocked. Looks like he took care of himself, that's for sure. You're here. I knew a real squad would blow through just fine. Sorry if the mech scuffed your pants. I'll get you something nice when we get back to Alliance Space. Gotta have some back pay coming. What about your crew, acting captain? Total loss. The toxic food turned them wild. They propped me up here in some kind of ritual behavior. Waiting for a chance to signal has been hell. That's the best you can do? You let all your people talk back like that? <laughs> Who are you exactly? Commander Shepard of the Normandy. I believe you are acquainted with Mr. Taylor. Taylor? Jacob? No. Not Jacob. Why not me? Would ten years of this look better to anyone else in the galaxy? You have to understand. This isn't me. The realities of command, they change you. I wasn't ready for that. I made sure you were taught right. Before I left, I hoped to leave it at that. I'm not unreasonable, Captain, but ten years? What happened? God damn it! Why did you do this to your crew? There was resistance to the plan. Mutiny. We had to take a hard line to keep order. And things settled down. As the decay set in, we made sure the crew were comfortable. Some even seemed happier. Ignorance is bliss, right? And they were grateful for guidance. Like an instinct. Pure authority was... easy. At first, months in, the effect lowered inhibitions. They got territorial, rank, protocol, they couldn't understand. We had to establish dominance. After a while, the perks seemed normal. That's it? You created a harem and played king? Ten years in a juvenile fantasy? I can't point to where it all went wrong. But when the beacon was ready, revealing what happened didn't seem like a good idea. Let's go ahead and ask a little bit more questions about what's happened. 
He didn't feel any responsibility to get out of here for the sake of family. I gave him a good start. He was a smart kid and was better off not following me. We figured that out a long time before I took jobs in deep space. And after things escalated here, it seemed best to just disappear off the galactic map. Till you needed someone to save your ass. What triggered the males to change and threaten you? This planet has some strange cycles to it. I've seen some plants around I never saw before. Odd weather. Maybe some just adapted a little too well. And if you treat them like animals, big shock. They become animals. Hmm. The stores from the ship couldn't last forever. You had to know this would end one day. Dining for one can really stretch things out. Besides, I can think of a lot worse retirement plans than stripping down and joining the droolers. That was before the hunters, of course. Dumb or not, I'd feel it if they got their hands on me now. They want blood. I'd prefer to keep it. <laughs> it's all about you. Everything. Yeah, his dad sucks, dude. What happened to the other officers? Anders found his conscience a little late to step back. He had an accident. Things got tense. End of the day, I was the one with the mechs. I got a little basic in setting examples. But I was kind to my people once things settled down. Seemed like I'd earned some peace. You fought over people like they were toys. Things. Well, we can undo the damage. We can help these people. Cerberus can have ships here in days and pull everyone out. He's not worth the fuel to haul him out or the air he's breathing. He's damn lucky I don't think he's even worth pulling the trigger. I don't know who you are, because you're not any father I remember. And we have some options to make friends. There's a few different ones that we can choose. We can have the Alliance come in and hopefully be able to take care of everything here. We could leave a gun for his father a half-charged pistol so that he can, well, take care of himself, or we can leave him at the hands of the survivors. My friends, we are going to choose the Alliance. We'll secure him for an Alliance court. For every year here, he'll have ten to think about it. Give him all the time in the galaxy. The man who did this doesn't know right from wrong. I'm sorry, Jacob. I did the best I could. I'm ten years past believing that. Before we end, let's go ahead and take a look at the different interactions we can have if we choose different options. This doesn't change what we did. Our real option that we chose for this You're is here. to turn I him know. over to the Alliance. Let's see what happens you if you do. don't do that. You let all your people talk back like that? It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure we can spare the ammo. Yeah, you're right. But I'm not taking the shot. My father owned his mistakes. He was a different man. A good man. Half charged. You've seen the crazy ones. This won't stop them. It's not for them, Dad. Maybe we go arrange pickup for the rest of the survivors while the acting captain deals with the hole we punched through his max. Now wait, I'm supposed to get rescued. The crazy ones, you don't know what they'll do to me. No, I think we know exactly what'll happen. My father was a different man, Shepard. A good man. Wish I'd found him. Jacob! You are a better man dead. As far as I'm concerned, you still are. Jacob! And there we go, just like that. Jacob's loyalty is earned. Survivors from AI are being treated by Alliance personnel with additional Cerberus support. Pleased to see Taylor unharmed psychologically by experience. Jacob Taylor has dealt with his father and is now focused solely 
on the mission. We've gained 750 experience. Jacob now has barrier. He has a new outfit. He's got loyalty. We found another heavy weapon pistol damage upgrade. We have 30,000 credits and 500 element zero. But we're not done yet. Because as we leave, for one of the only times in the entire game, this is the only time we will have a briefing with the elusive man after a an optional mission. And we get the trophy, Ghost of the Father. Alliance ships are inbound to secure Captain Taylor and his crew commander. We'll be long gone by the time they get here. Don't even give them the tail lights. Roger that. What do you mean it wasn't you? Jacob, if I had leaked the information about the Gernsback, I would be smiling at your resolution of the situation. I am not smiling. Nothing goes through this ship, my ship, without a report to you. I had no more reason to believe Jacob's father was alive than he did, but I'm happy to know the situation is behind you. Fine. You didn't forward it. So who did? I did. Ah, the obvious. Figures. Who else could get into Cerberus channels? It was hardly classified, just obscure. There was a time when it mattered to you. Sending this along seemed like keeping an old promise. I keep my promises. Miranda, we'll discuss your liberal interpretation of security protocol in private. Shepard, Jacob. You had no idea Miranda was behind this. No, she's got a good memory. Selective, but good. I haven't thought about those days in a long time. Can't figure which promise she meant, though. Not sure I really want to know. She requires a better man than I. You good with this, Jacob? It's all bull, Shepard. Captain Taylor can rot in prison. It doesn't change who I am or what I know. I've already mourned the man he used to be. I guess he was a good enough father that even he can't screw up what he taught me. That's good enough. Come on, we got work to do. Aye, Commander. Shepard. Thanks for the help. Anytime, Jacob. And we get four Paragon points, heavy pistol weapon damage upgrade, which we're gonna go ahead and research that real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and check in with with Jacob. Let's go ahead and grab this heavy pistol uh, damage. We need 7,500 palladium. Trust me, we have plenty. And unfortunately, that doesn't open up any other upgrades for us, but it does max out our heavy pistols. And we're going to go ahead and check in with Jacob. Thanks for diverting to the Gurns back, Shepard. I appreciate being able to clean up that mess. Maybe not the best way to learn about the relatives, but I'm glad it's done. What do you need? Just want to talk? I'm interested in getting to know you better. Already? I'm not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's well, do this later. You're a whatever, dude. Later. Commander. You know, we go, we divert all of our resources to going and helping Jacob ish deal with deal with what he's doing, and he can't even he can't even talk to like, dude, bro. Are you kidding me? Anyways, let's check in with Joker real quick, because that was a loyalty mission. So potentially we have more things that we can now hear from Joker. Uh, and, but we'll uh, see. The stuff with Jacob's dad. Bullshit, right? Because it looked like bullshit to me. Yeah, it's bullshit. I assume it's good for now. Fracture. Anyways, you, we can head out now. Uh, and that is pretty much everything that we can do right now. Remember, we are delaying any romantic relationships or anything until we can reset. Because, yes, I want to show that so we can get a trophy. But I don't want to ruin my relationship with Hi, our one and only... Uh, our one and only Liara. There so no, there's nothing else here, yeah. just Fane that like we will hear about the three loyalty missions so that we have left, Fane, like Tally, and Jack. And in our next uh, our next episode of Mass Effect 2, we will actually be tackling Jack's loyalty mission. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode uh, while we finally got back to, to doing some of the the real story-based stuff there. Uh, also, I want to point out that we are now, we now have seven squad points that we can put into stuff, and I see no reason not to just put it into cryo ammo. Shockwave is fine. I just don't see a reason of having that or pull. Um, honestly, we're going to be using, we just use our charge too much, and with charge and heavy reeve, 
we just can't afford the cooldowns that Shockwave and Pull will give us. So I recommend not going into those if you're playing like I am. Um, and Inferno Ammo and Cryo Ammo is just going to allow us to do some cool things. In fact, when we do go into Cryo Ammo, we're going to be going with Squad Cryo Ammo since we already have Inferno Ammo on that. Thank you guys so much. Remember, never give up, never surrender, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.